Hi, my name is Ken, and this is Let's Code a MUD in C++11 Part 5. Uh, so in the last part, we put together some connection logic, and we were able to write data out over a socket. Uh, in this part, we're going we're gonna to refine that a little bit. We're going to make a more generally usable writing interface uh, for the uh, rest of the program. Okay. So uh, what we did to write to the socket is we used a stream and we used a buffer and we put data into the stream uh, which served as an adapter for a buffer and then we wrote the buffer out to the socket. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make an interface that does that. Uh, we're going to make a, a general write call um, that takes in some sort of string for now. We call it message and puts it, in fact, let's just move this all over here. We'll put the message in the stream and then we'll write the stream. Now, we have a small problem with this approach, uh, which is that uh, we, we, it's fine to do this once, uh, but we need to make sure, we need to add some assurance that we're not writing to the buffer while a previous buffer is being sent out. Uh, as long as this, this async write call is outstanding, that we haven't received the, the callback yet, uh, we need to make sure that output buffer does not get uh, modified at all. Uh, otherwise, the, the ASIO library will have a fit. Uh, so how we're going to accomplish this is we're going to introduce a second buffer, and we're going to do uh, what's called double buffering. We're going to have one buffer that's being worked on uh, by the library and one buffer that we can access. And then uh, at, at the correct times, we'll swap the two. Uh, so the, the buffer we've been writing to goes out to the socket, and then we have a new buffer to write to. Um, there's, there's other approaches than double buffering to get this done. Um, I have seen ASIO programs that use a queue of buffers uh, and just delete the buffer when it's done uh, being sent, um, but we're not going to do that. So um, we need to make a second buffer and a second stream. So we'll call this output buffer 1 and output buffer 2, output stream 1 and output stream 2, and we'll make sure that we've got a constructor for it. Okay, and then we're going to want um, pointers. We're going to want pointers uh, so that we can always pick the one that's safe for us to access and then the one that's being worked on. So we'll call this output buffer and buffer being written. And we'll call this output stream and stream being written. Let's initialize all these. So let's see. Output stream will start as a pointer to stream one. And output buffer will start as a pointer to buffer one and then same thing buffer being written will be output buffer two and output stream two will be stream being written okay so we have the variables initialized um, we still need to figure out how to swap them so what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna add another function here I'm just going to add a utility function called write to socket. Uh, and this will do this async write call to take over the job here of uh, getting the data over to the socket. Uh, this would be the point at which I want to actually create a CPP file because this function is going to be a little bit on the longer side. Uh, so let's create that file source server connection.cpp. Going to include connection.hpp and pull in our namespace uh, using namespace mud 
server. Uh, so this is okay. I don't have to open the namespace uh, with the curly braces again because we're not actually declaring anything. We're just def uh, specifying the definition of a function that's already been declared. Uh, so we're, it's going to be connection dot write. So let's see, this is void connection uh, write to socket. Okay. So uh, let's start with what we had. Okay, um, so first of all, uh, this is going to have to be a buffer being written. And this one's a pointer, so let me dereference it. Um, but first, let's see. So our concern is, well, first, every time we write to the socket, let's swap the, the buffers. So let's see, we're going to swap output buffer with buffer being written. So we swap those two pointers and then we'll do it again for the streams. Okay. Um, but we need to make sure, we need to handle the case uh, when there's still an async write call outstanding. So we need to know if it's currently in the process of writing or not. Um, so we're going to have, let's see, if it's not writing, we'll introduce a new variable here. Um, or rather, if it is writing, um, we're going to return early. Um, but if it wasn't writing, it sure is writing now. Okay. Um, now, if it is writing, we can't just return because it's got to know that there's new data waiting in the second buffer, in the output buffer. Um, so if it, if it is in the process of writing and we attempt to do a new write, we have to somehow know that when it's done, it's got to go again. Uh, so I'm also going to introduce a variable more to write uh, to tell it to go again and tell more to write be true. And then you can call this three, four, five times. And as long as, um, more to write is true, we're fine. Um, we, we can keep writing to the same buffer as long as it's not the one being worked on by ASIO. Um, so we just have to account uh, for the case uh, when it's not writing and for the case where it is writing. Okay. Um, now, that more to write means we've got to tell it to go again. Uh, so we've got to, let's see, let's, let's change this to if error and we'll say, um, async write returned an error. Uh, but then let's say if there is more to write, go ahead and go again, write to socket, and then set more to write to be false. Um, so it's important that we do it in this order um, oh, actually, let's, let's try and follow the logic here of what happens, uh, as is. So a write comes in, uh, it sets writing to true. While this is waiting to complete, a second write comes in, it sets more to write to true. And then this completes, um, more to write is true. So it's going to go back, but we haven't set writing to false yet. So it's not actually, uh, going to go again. It'll give up. Uh, so we need to set writing to false. So this second attempt uh, goes goes ahead and completes. Um, now let's see. If we set more to write to be false, it looks like the order's not important here. Um, as long as we do it at some point, looks like that's not going to matter. Let's do it there, and we'll see if there's a problem. Um, but I think, I think we've actually got it. I think this wasn't that complicated. Okay. So, um, let's, let's think about this. Let's follow this through logically. So first time writing and more to write are both false. Uh, and in fact, let's, uh, get that explicit. Let's create those variables and set them to false, uh, writing and more to write. Uh, we could also use, we could also use an enum, uh, for a state 
Uh, but since it's just, uh, what, three states, I'm not going to be too concerned about it. So I'm going to set writing to false. And more to write to false. Okay. All right. So first time through, uh, M writing is false. Okay. And more to write is false. Uh, it's going to go ahead and swap the buffers. So the one we were writing to is now the one that's going to get written. Uh, we write it. Okay. Um, now, uh, if this is the only thing that happens, then when it completes, it'll, it'll say that it's not writing anymore. We're good. Um, and there was not more to write and we're done. Okay. That's great. But say there's a second call while this is outstanding. Okay. So we come through again, this time M writing is true. Um, so we need, we set more to write to true and then return. And then this guy comes back, he sets writing to false. He notices that there's more to write. And so he goes back to the top. Okay. He goes back to the top. Uh, writing is false, so we're going to skip this section. Writing is true, and we go ahead and we do the write. Okay, um, yeah, so it doesn't matter the position of this more to write. It could be before or after the write to socket, but it looks like this is fine. All right, um, so what we accomplished here, hopefully, uh, we'll test it in a second, but we, what we accomplished is we have a, a double buffering mechanism, a way to... Uh, give the program something to work on while the, the connection, the output side of the connection is busy. Uh, and we can have two, three, four, five write calls, um, and they can all put things into the output buffer as long as it's not the one being sent. Okay, and then at some point we swap. Um, so I'm happy with that. Uh, do we have this right? Yeah, we're gonna put this in the stream and then we're gonna uh, do that internal and then this write call is now a perfectly good API. We can call it uh, as many times as we want. We know that our logic internally uh, will be safe, that we won't, uh, we won't break anything for ASIO. All right, so let's just test it with that start write. Um, let's see that this works. Um, oh, we, we have an, a warning from dash W reorder. Uh, looks like, let's see, output stream. So stream and stream being written. Ah, okay. So if I put this in this order, will it complain? Uh, it won't complain about that, but now it's going to complain about something else. Oh, output stream. We changed it to a pointer, so we need to dereference that pointer because it, it, it could be one of the two buffers, and we don't know which it is at that point in time. Uh, oh, and write to socket, not write socket. And what? Oh, okay, that .cpp file isn't getting compiled yet. So we need to actually go back to our CMake list and we need to add in source server connection.cpp because we have our first new CPP file. Um, and you can see the advantage of doing this uh, as a list of files rather than as a glob is now I can just run compile. I don't have to run CMake again. Compile will rerun CMake. It'll notice that the CMake list changed. Um, now I just have some include issues here. So let's include IO stream. Okay, built. Um, let's run it from scratch. Server's now running. Okay, and we got the message. We got connection started. Okay, so uh, oh, and we don't have write completed successful, but that's because we inverted the message. We changed it to only tell us if there's an error instead to tell us uh, if the write's successful. I mean, you imagine there's going to be a lot of writes. We don't want a message every single time a write was successful. Um, so um, this was a good uh, effort here. We have now an interface that we can expose uh, to the rest of the program in connection.hpp. We have a, a write call that the rest of the program can use. Um, we're going to work on this a little bit in the next episode. We're going to talk a little bit about function templates uh, and how to improve this. Uh, but for now, I think we're good. Uh, so um, we learned a little bit about uh, double buffering and ways to make a practical API. Uh, my name is Ken, and this was Let's Code a MUD in C++ 11 Part 5.